three widths and three decomposition, uh, we'll see k for mine of three graphs, or three widths two graphs, or somehow three widths two graphs is a classical graph family, and we'll have an algorithm for uh, for those graphs. So this is a joint work with uh, Anjum Kim, who has been postdoc uh, in our group, and you know, is at, at, uh, with a similar position at the Ramsad in Paris, and uh, Givarghese Philippe from uh, Chennai. Okay. So what is the problem? So I give you a graph and uh, an integer k, and the question is whether you can find a subset of vertices s of size at most k, such that uh, the removal of these vertices uh, leads to a k minus of three graphs. Okay. So or equivalently. Is there a subset of vertices of size, a, a, a subset of at most k vertices whose removal drop the three bits of the graph to a value at most two? Okay, so uh, some uh, observation and motivation for this problem. Vertex cover uh, is actually the k2 minor cover, and this corresponds to removing a set of k vertices to get a 3 bits 0 graph, whereas feedback vertex set is the k3 minor cover, and you seek for a set of vertices to get to remove to get a 3 bits 1 graph of a rest. And more generally, we can ask uh, the 3 bits t vertex deletion. Uh, <coughs> but for today, we will stick with this uh, Three with two, and what what is known is this problem is uh, FPT by the two famous uh, Robertson Seymour graph minor theorem, or by Corsell theorem because this is a MSO problem. Uh, recently, the best uh, algorithm has been proposed by Fermin and some other authors runs in uh, 2 to the k log k times a polynomial in n. I should tell you that this algorithm works for every value, value t for the tree which you want to, to obtain. And also, you, you cannot hope for 2 to the little o of k algorithm. So really, the, the question is whether you can solve this problem in single exponential k time. So some c to the k times a polynomial n. And uh, we answer positively to this question. Uh, I, I won't explicit the, the constant here, and, uh, but it's not explicit neither in the, uh, in, in the paper, but uh, it's, it's not too, too big, by the way. So the ingredients we will use are three main ingredients. So first, we we'll consider we we'll use the technique of iterative compression. Um, I will illustrate this, but if you're not used to that, it's not, it's not a problem. Just take it as a black box. It will using this we can 
concentrate on the variant of the problem. And then, and this is the interesting part, uh, we'll use a branch or reduce process. So we'll propose a set of reduction rules and a set of branching rules uh, to get a bunch of instance. The number of these instance are single exponential, such that the original instance is a yes instance if I leave one of the uh, resulting instance of the branch or reduce process is a yes instance. And the funny part is that solving this uh, uh, resulting instances um, is, is exactly solving the vertex pro cover problem in circle graphs. So I don't know if I have time to, call, to develop this last part, but OK, so this is the, somehow the outline. So as a warm up, I like to start with the iterative compression for feedback vertex. This is a very nice algorithm that uh, you can teach uh, in an algorithmic course. So I don't know what, who's the author. I think it's Chen and uh, the, the first single exponential using iterative compression. <coughs> I don't remember. Anyway, so feedback vertex set, given a vertex, uh, a graph G, find a subset of S vertices uh, whose removal results in a forest. And we are interested to solve the following problem, the disjoint feedback vertex set. So you are given a first solution, and the question is now to ask whether there exists another solution, smaller, which is disjoint from, from the original one. And if you can solve this disjoint feedback vertex set problem in FPT time, in single exponential FPT time, then you can solve the original problem in single exponential FPT time. So for this, what we do use, what, the, what they use, is a set of branching and reduction rules. And to measure the, complexi the complexity, they, use a, they introduce a function, which is k, number of vertices, you uh, size of the original uh, uh, solution plus the number of connected components of the subgraph induced by the original solution. And for our problem, we'll use a variant of this. And that will be one of the key ingredients. So here is uh, an instance of the vision <coughs> feedback vertex set. So you have in, in gray the forbidden, uh, the original solution. So trivially, you want to, to search for a solution inside this down part. So any leaf, of course you can have a multiple components here, but for sake of simplicity, consider just a single tree. You can re safely remove every leaf of the tree which has no neighbor in the original solution. This is the first rule. A second rule, if you have a leaf, which has W2, like this one or like this one, then you can bypass this leaf. This means contracting the edge between the leaf and its neighbor. Okay. Third rule, if you have a vertex who has two neighbors in the same connected component in the subgraph and used by the original solution, you have to use this vertex because it's part of a cycle which you have to, to kill. So you remove that vertex and you decrease the parameter by one. And now, so again, here you can apply the bypassing rule. And now you have the last rule, which is the only branching rule for this problem. And we will branch. There are two possibilities. Either you take this vertex in the solution, and then you decrease the parameter by, K, by one, or you don't use this vertex in the solution, which means that the vertex will be moved in the forbidden set of vertices, and then the number of connected components decrease by one. So the measure mu that we introduced before decreases in both cases. Okay? So <coughs> this means that disjoint feedback vertex set can be solved in 4 to the k 
times the polynomial in n. The measure function is bounded by 2k, and the branching degree is 2. OK. So we'll proceed the same way for the Dijon k4 minor cover problem. So we, again, we need to adapt the measure function, mu, and we need to adapt the branching rules. <coughs> for the, what you have to keep in mind is when you deal with this Dijon version of the problem, both the graph induced by the, by the former solution S is k4 minor 3, and the remaining graph, the other part of the graph, is also S, uh, k4 minor 3 which means that every biconnected component is a series parallel graph. Yes? Biconnected edge vertex. So, so what is the definition of biconnected? Uh, vertex. OK, so let's go to, let's move to the, to the reduction rule. So again, what we want, we want to solve the Dijon version of the problem. We have a set S which correspond to an original solution, and we want to <coughs> we want to test whether there exists a Dijon set S prime of vertices of small size, which is also a K4 minor cover. <coughs> so dealing with K4 minor is uh, equivalent of dealing with uh, uh, K4 subdivision, and we will, the branching nodes in red here of the K4. Uh, will be called branching nodes, <laughs> and the other nodes here, <coughs> the blue nodes, are called subdivision nodes. Um, we'll use this notation as well. If you take a set of vertices, its boundary is noted uh, delta of x. Uh, this here, these are the blue vertices, and in the down part. We, are, we will distinguish different type of vertices. N0, the, the, the vertices which do, does not have any neighbors <coughs> in S. N1, the one that have one neighbors in S, N2, and etc. OK, so the first rule. Uh, we have a bunch of reduction rules, so I will uh, review them. So the first reduction rule is if you have is a connected component here, uh, which is which, which has no neighbor. So, a really a con connected component of the of the whole graph. You can remove it. A connected a graph uh, a subset of vertices which is connected to the rest of the graph by a bridge. You can also remove it. Or a connected comp uh, a subset of vertices which is connected to the rest of the graph with a cut vertex then you can also remove it. The reason of this is no K4 subdivision will involve, will put the bran the, its branching vertices inside this, comp this uh, component or this set of vertices. OK? So if you encounter such set of vertices, you can safely remove those and keep a an equivalent in sense. So again, inherited fr from the uh, uh, feedback vertex set, you can bypass every degree two vertex, w which have one vertex in e one neighbor in S and the other in <coughs> V minus S. And if by the operation of bypassing or uh, other operation, you you create multiple edge between two vertices then you can safely keep only one copy of these edges. OK? So these are the first three reduction rules. These are quite classical rules, by the way. Uh, in, in the rule one, yes. uh, what happens if you have a K4 subdivision in, inside the X? It's not possible. The down part is K4 free, because S ah, oh, is okay. a K4 minor cover. You, you really have to keep this in mind. Okay. And this gives you a lot of structure. OK, so now we have two more rules, a bit more complicated. If you have a pass, and th this is really a pass. This is an induced pass. 
We don't have any chords in be between those vertices. A path which is long enough and such that every vertex of that path sees only one vertex in, in S and every one sees the same vertex in S. So this is really what is described in, in this picture. So if this pass contain more than <coughs> four vertices, or at least four vertices, then you can contract one of the middle edge. Why? Because the, the set X of vertices of the pass cannot contain more than three branching nodes of any K4, K4 minor. Okay, so reducing such a pass to a pass of th on three vertices is safe. When you run this rule, you have an equivalent instance. Okay, and now the last reduction rule. Um, <coughs> assume you have a set of vertex that will be, which is connected to the rest of the graph by a two cut set. Here are the two blue points. And such that the inner vertices of x belongs to n0, so they don't have any neighbors in, uh, in the former solution. Then, either adding this edge. So rem remind that this is a series parallel graph. Whether adding this edge to the subgraph induced by x provide you a series parallel graph, then you can safely trans replace x by this single edge. Again, because the intuition behind is because if you have a k for minor, then you have one that involves only the two boundary vertices of x. Whereas if adding this edge create a K4 minor inside the subgraph G of X, the induced subgraph G of X, then you replace the whole subgraph G of X by this small subgraph. And again, you see that the idea is if you are using a path towards S and going linking the two blue vertices, then your, this graph is equivalent to this graph with respect to create a K4 minor. Okay. So now I move to these horrible things called protrusion rules. And this is a, actually kind of generalization of the last rule. So what is a T protrusion? Uh, so this is a subgraph. Uh, this is a set of vertices rules which induce a subgraph of three weeks at most t and whose boundary has size at most t. Okay. And the idea of a protrusion rule is once you find a t protrusion, x, you would like to replace it with a smaller t protrusion, x prime, <coughs> while preserving the equivalent instance. And Coming back to the fifth rule, this is exactly what we did. Okay? In case this produce a series parallel graph, hiding the, the edge between the two boundary vertices, then we can replace the old set, the old protrusion X by a single edge graph. Whereas when it produces a K4 minor, then you replace it with this small graph of size 4. And so, more generally, what you, you can show is that if x is a subset of vertices not interse intersecting s, of size su sufficiently large, then you can find another set x prime to replace it and which will give you uh, another instance g prime s with another parameter k prime, another parameter value, such that the size of x prime is, is smaller than the size of x, the parameter has decreased, and 
you do not have touch the subgraph induced by S. And moreover, G prime minus S prime is K4 minor 3. Oh, sorry, G prime minus S is K4 minor 3. OK? And doing the, this, you want, of course, to preserve the equivalence of the instance. And so this is possible if you are giving me, so finding protrusion, uh, finding t, t protrusion and uh, finding the replacement protrusion uh, can be done. The, we, we know that this is, there exists an algorithm that can do this in poly time. The fact that there exists is important. This is an existence here present only. Okay, so we have seen some reduction rules. We have generalized the reduction rules to protrusion rules. And now I want to move to branching rules. Remember that for, vertex, uh, for feedback vertex set, we had one branching rule. So and the, we, we will have three branching rules, but the spirit is about the, the same. So the first branching rule is this one. If you have a set X, the blue sets, such that the subgraph induced by S union X has a K4 subdivision, then for sure you have to take one of the vertices in X. So you will branch on every vertex of X. We, for feedback vertex set, we use that rule only for the one vertex who has two neighbors in the same component. So it was a reduction rule. Here it is a branching rule. <coughs> OK, so we'll discuss later about the size of this set X. So now the measure function. So like for feedback vertex, <coughs> it involves the size of the initial function, balanced with some constant. <coughs> The number of connected components of the subgraph induced by the forbidden vertices and the number of biconnected components. This is the new part. So the new part is this and this balance constant. So now the branching rule two is if you find a set X which has two neighbors in different connected components of G of S, then Either you pick one of the vertices of x, or either you put, you move all x in the set of forbidden vertices. And in both cases, if you pick one vertex, then the measure decrease k, the, the parameter decrease k. And if you put, if you move the whole set inside the forbidden vertices, then you decrease the number of connected components. And the fact that we use this constant make sure that in every case the, measure, the total uh, sum of the, the total measure will decrease. And the third rule, so we have dealt with set of vertices with two neighbors in different connected components. So now we'll, we will deal with set of vertices X with two neighbors in different two connected components. And this is exactly the same principle. If you have a set of vertices with two neighbors in different bi-connected components, Either you pick one of those vertices, or you move the whole vertex set in the set of forbidden vertices. <coughs> okay, and we claim that the branching, uh, the, the measure mu is always decreasing. The size of C1 de will depend on the size, the maximum size of the set X to which we will apply the, the rules. And of course, if we want single exponential time, what we want is that this, we want a, um, a constant branching degree. So this set, we have to guarantee that these sets will be of constant size. So now the algorithm. So first we apply the branching rules and the branching and reduction rules on every set, X, single, singleton sets. Then we obtain an equivalent instance such that every vertex has either zero, one, or two neighbors in S. Then we will use, just for the, sake, for the sake of implementation, we'll use the fact that uh, the down part is a series, is a, 
the, the two connected components of the down part are series parallel. So we use this block decomposition, and inside inside each block we use the series parallel composition. So this is a, and I think this a kind of what we call extended SP decomposition, which combines the block decomposition and the series parallel decomposition of each biconnected component. We bottom up process this tree decomposition to be able to apply the protrusion rule and the branching rules on sets which has constant size. <coughs> and by the way, the, the protrusion rule will be applied only on protrusion of size uh, with t of value t less than 4. So we use the, the protrusion only for 3 and 4 protrusion. For 2 protrusion, we have the rule, explicit rule. For 3 and 4, we don't have yet, I would say. So eventually, what we can prove is that the branch or reduce process leads to 2 to the O of k instances, such that 1 is positive if and if the original one was positive. And what we can show is that these instances are called, we call these instances independent instance. The structure is the following. So we have the set S of Fabian vertex. The, the down part is now an independent set. Every vertex in the down part has two neighbors which belong to the same bi-connected component. And for every set, for every vertex X in S, in, not in S, G, you know, G of S union X is K4 minus 3. So now the algorithm works for the last step, works as follows. You build an auxiliary, auxiliary graph on this set of vertices. You put an edge in this graph if and only if, oh, that should be S, the subgraph induced by S and these two vertices contain a K4 minor. And what we have to do now, this is to solve vertex cover on this auxiliary graph. And I can stop here, because vertex cover you can solve it in 2 to the k, so it's compatible with single exponential time. But um, as I mentioned, I, I, I don't have time, but as I mentioned, this graph turns out to be a circle graph. So for those who are interested in, in this, I can uh, give an explanation of that later. Okay, ta -ta -ta -ta. sorry. So now the conclusion is that we provided, uh, we proved the existence of a single exponential FPT time algorithm for the K4 minor cover. And this is just existential because of the protrusion rule. I think we can turn, turn this algorithm to an explicit one because we just have to, keep to, to deal with small value of, protru of protrusion. Three protrusion and four protrusion. So, but it's, it requires a deep uh, uh, k by k analysis that is a bit uh, long. And we strongly believe that <coughs> we can apply exact, uh, we can slightly modify the rules to address the autoplanar vertex deletion, autoplanar graph vertex deletion. We have to kill, to make the rules compatible with the existence of K2 free minor. And of course, these two uh, open question. Can we really get rid of the protrusion? And can we extend to either K t value of T for KT minor free vertex deletion problem? Thanks. <coughs> <coughs>